going to be talking about the type of twins that I'm having and the reason that they are um, considered high risk and uh, some of the things that come along with that. And um, yeah, so um, I am currently 17 and a half weeks pregnant with twins and they're called monodi twins. If I keep looking down, it's because I have, I wrote stuff out here. Um, I'm having mono dye twins, and so what that means is basically they're in two sacks, but they share the same placenta, and so um, it's a fairly uncommon type of twins to have, but uh, the reason that it's uh, concerning for them is because, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know why it's not all identical twins, or I'm not really sure, but um, what it, they're at risk to have something called twin-to-twin -twin transfusion, which basically means that one baby will starve the other baby. And, uh, so basically, um, because of this and because it, it has like, it, it's only, I think a 15% chance of happening or a 20% chance of happening if you have these type of twins, but because of it, they highly monitor you to make sure that your babies aren't like one isn't starting to take all the nutrients and the other gets none. And then the other, if it's getting none, it will have like less um, amniotic fluid and it will stop developing as it's supposed to be. So um, because of this, I go and get an ultrasound done every two weeks and I see my OBGYN every three weeks. Um, the other thing that happens is if they start to notice that I have um, have developed this, what happens is, is I have to fly to Toronto. So I live in Canada. And so there's only a couple people in the country who do a surgery that you have to get done if this um, develops. I don't know if you would call it a disease or what you would call it. But, um, so if it develops, um, I would have to fly to the basically the main city in um, my country, like the, the capital or not really capital, but kind of. It's like the biggest city we have. But uh, to get... Um, this surgery done like life laser wise I'm not really sure exactly how it works so if when I go to an ultrasound they notice that I've developed the disease condition whatever um, then that same day I have to fly to uh, Toronto is the city I'd have to go to to get it fixed and so um, that's really concerning just because whenever I go for an ultrasound I don't know if the next day I'm going to have to fly somewhere and it's just, it's a little nerve wracking. Like even though they don't like, cause it can develop sporadically. Like it's not something that is like slow onset. It can be, you don't have it and then you do have it. So it's very like worrying, I guess. Cause you never know when you go in that everything is going to be okay. Right. And the good thing is I get to see my babies every two weeks, but, um, yeah, some other things that happen because of this is, I will not be allowed to go past 37 weeks pregnant. Um, if I make it to the 37 week mark, they will induce me. But they said they don't anticipate me even making it to 36 weeks. So um, I think the reason they induce you if you make it to 37 weeks is because it's not worth them developing it. They would rather get them out safely at full term than risk the condition developing. So. But um, it's concerning to hear when you go and you see the doctor that they don't think you're going to make it past um, or even two thirty six weeks because it's you don't know when your babies are going to come. And so that's why I think I have a lot more stuff than someone would particularly have at this stage in their pregnancy because realistically, I don't know if even though my due date is October 26th. I won't make it to October 26. It's off the table. So realistically, we're more looking at September 26 of the 36 week mark, roughly. But in the same breath, I could even have them end of August, right? You know, it's just, it's really up in the air. And I get that, like, for a lot of pregnancies, you don't know necessarily, and a lot of people do go into preterm labor. But preterm labor is actually fairly common with this, um, with these, uh, with this condition, or not even developing the condition, just with the type of twins that they are, because they come with a lot of other complications too, and especially if you have 
um, preeclampsia or diabetes or anything like if I develop any like currently I don't have diabetes or preeclampsia but um, if I develop them then it makes my chances of having the babies um, much sooner uh, much more likely so um, yeah that's basically um, the whole twin to twin transfusion and having mono dye twins and what kind of risks come with that and of course you're high risk for the babies being underdeveloped because if I go into labor early most likely they will spend time in the NICU so our goal is to make it to 37 weeks which would be the very beginning of October end of September I believe so um, that's the goal so then they're full terms <laughs> or not full term but they're you know what I'm saying they're they're developed they're fully developed at that point so, um, yeah, so that's the goal to get to the 37 week mark, but, uh, there's a lot that can happen between now and then. So it's really taking it one day at a time. And, you know, I have definitely had to learn to let go during this pregnancy. Sometimes I can be kind of controlling and I like things a certain way, but with this, it's just the goal is to have the baby. Sorry, the camera shaking. Sorry. It's the goal is to get the babies out safe. And um, if that means C-section, if it means delivering one of the baby's breech, which I has been discussed, it means that I just have to go with the flow. And if that means getting surgery while pregnant, then that's just what has to be done. So, um, yeah, I hope this is helpful if you found out you're having monodite twins or if it was interesting. So, yeah, if you would like to follow my pregnancy further, uh, please click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Bye.